Well, welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Jeff Good. Hello, hello, everyone. Jeff, I had your co-host on, Kaylee, and you're both part of a podcast. Yeah, the United States of Horror. Yeah, uh, it's our podcast about horror, paranormal, creepy stuff. So I'm happy to be a part of it. Quick, what's the best way to kill somebody? Eating them alive. Really? No, I don't. Um, I feel like that's the one thing that that probably is like the best diet trend, but it's like never be canceled because I feel like honestly, if you look somewhere in the United States, there's people that probably eat other people. Yeah, no, I'm I'm actually totally joking. I think the best way is to uh, like saw, make them where you trap them, and then make them kind of like kill them so open away. So it's not technically you murdering them, but it's technically them doing it, trying to get away from something. That's probably the most entertaining one. I feel like it just yeah. because it's weird to see how people's brains would think. Like if you put me in a scenario with like um I don't know, like I had to get a key out of the back of my head or something, and then if they yeah. put you in that scenario, I feel like I would just give up and be like, I'd rather just die because I don't feel like digging my eye out with this rusty spoon to be able to get a key. <laughs> but I'm like. That's definitely the most entertaining because I think the easiest way or like the one that's like people always talk about is like an ice pick. But I'm just oh, like – Oh, yeah, that way. No, it's – yeah. What about like the ocean? Like taking somebody out into the ocean? Like I, I mean I live in a beach town and I'm not saying I've thought about it, but we've had a lot of people just get lost at sea. I'm like, whatever happened to those people? Like we lost that an airplane true. and nobody found that airplane. Like where, where did that go? Well, yeah, a lot of um, like mobsters, that's actually what they do. Like they take them out deep in the ocean. They throw them their body and, you know, by the pier, never see them again. That's why like in, towards Maine, yeah, like by the lighthouses, the lighthouse keeper actually would be a perfect job because you kill them, throw the body out and say, no, I haven't seen anyone. I didn't even think of that. Dude. And, you know, the sharp rocks, someone get there, if it ever freezes. Yeah. I love the start of this podcast. Imagine being a lighthouse keeper and just like you're out there controlling the light that brings all these ships to safety, like during a fog or something. You just turn it off like <laughs> yeah. it's like you have to take a mental check before you become a lighthouse guy. Oh, yeah. Or even you live by yourself. So if someone ever visit you and then, you know, just take them out, get rid of the body and be like, no, I never saw anyone. I've just been up here in my tower the whole time just looking out for ships. That's the problem a weird job with nowadays. hitchhiking, dude. I figured it out the hard way. I had my car blow out at like 1 a.m. And like I was like oh, 15 no. miles away from my house in like the middle of like there's no buildings. It's just nothing but trees. So I'm walking home in a black jacket and shorts in like 30 degree weather. Like it's snowing out <laughs> because I was like I, I was coming back from like the gym. So I was like, all right, well, OK, I guess I got to run home. So I'm like running. Dude, a cop passes me. He rolls down his window. He goes, you know, hitch hitchhiking is illegal right i'm like oh i didn't know then he drives off i'm like the fuck thanks <laughs> thanks for the help dude <laughs> like couldn't pick me up and take me home but i guess he was following the law too he guess it'd be ironic if he was like all right let me take you home well i got a question what if that cop was really a killer just took the cop's outfit he just was tired of killing for the night so he's like all right i'll let him go don't fuck with my memories jeff you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of stuff. Do you ever look back at your memories and be like, is that exactly what happened? Or is it just so later on I started adding details to it? Uh, every single day. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. So I'm like, I think I had a yogurt, bacon. Wait, no, I'm, I just, I, no, no bacon. That's a, yogurt, I'm going to say, that's a breakfast of a serial killer. Yogurt and bacon. I'm like, that's a weird combination. Oh, yeah, it's it would be rough. But anyway. Well, like so. when it comes to like hitchhiking and stuff, I think that was a big popular thing back in the day is like a lot of people are afraid to pick up hitchhikers because you never know where to go. But like how many people, like I picked up hitchhikers before. Actually, yeah. I had a very weird experience. So I was, it's like 1 a.m. I used to work out. I mean, I still kind of do at 1 a.m. Um, but I was heading back home from the gym and I was coming around like there's a lot of turns and like, I mean, sharp like turns, like where it has the yellow arrow that tells you like, hey, this is going to be a sharp turn, slow down. Yeah. And um I mean, there's so many trees. It's nighttime. You can't see this dude had no reflectors on his bike. I just missed this guy with my car. He was oh. wearing black clothing. I was like, damn, dude, like I didn't even see that guy. The next day I read an article, not even an hour after I had passed that guy, that same person had been killed at 2 a.m. 
on his bike. They found a person dead at like 2.32 in the morning. And I was like, that was the fucking guy I saw. Like that would like if that could have been me that could have hit him. I was like, I was about to say, yeah, but like that's it was, scary. It's a hit. It was a hit and run. I was like, what do you do in that scenario? Like, how many people out there that are considered murderers? It was accidental, but they just don't know what to do, so they freak out and run. So, if I was also a true killer, if I was following you home and I saw that guy, I would hit him, and then somehow blame blame you for hitting him. Whoa, man. Dude, hold on a second. I, I'll go back to the beginning where we talked about the mobster thing, and it made me think of the Simpsons. But then, the car and the, but, then I, uh, but it was it made me think of the Simpsons movie where they were trying to clean the lake, and the mobster guy was like, "I need somewhere to throw my lawn trimmings." And he goes, "What? Please, I think there was a there was a there was a <laughs> dead body in that bag." And he goes, "No, no, no. I thought that too until he said yawn yeah, trimmings." Yeah, Chinnings. Yeah, I love that part. That's it's hilarious. When you're doing your podcast, for instance, like when you guys come across a certain topic, like what interests you the most about a serial killer? Because like I started getting really super interested into like the Manson murders, and some guy oh. had literally studied the case for 20 years, and he actually wrote a book and a documentary about it. Where the fact is, the government was helping him get away with these things. Yeah, I read uh, one of that reports, and I don't know if it's true or not, but um, it was like an experiment, a secret experiment in which they did give him drugs just to see how he would treat other people like a controlling thing. That's why they think all this stuff's happening right now is like a mass scale of that, mass controlling. So I feel like I don't a try lot to of get. It, I mean, if you look at like you want somebody taken out, how easy would it be to drug somebody or mind control somebody to do it for you? Yeah, um, I'm not really the serial killer kind of guy. That's Kaylee. I'm more like the conspiracy theory, crazy nut oh. job. Oh, and you're uh, going urban conspiracy myths. theories. What, what what exactly conspiracy theories do you think are conspiracy theories, and which ones do you think are more likely true? So I believe in Atlantis and Loch Ness monster. Okay, explain the Atlantis one for me, because you're speaking to a person that had wanted to be a merman for a very very long time when he was a kid. Okay, first of all, merman with bottom half or top half? Hopefully, honestly, <laughs> that's a very tough question now because now I'm thinking of my crotch. I yeah, will say, what's more important? Um, like looking good looking face or good looking bottom half? See, it's kind of hit or miss. But I believe uh, Atlantis is real. And it was a secret you know, society a long time ago that you know it could even be aliens, but I don't know for sure that part. I know there was a secret race out there deep in the ocean. Because I believe the whole center of the earth is like hollow. And that's where technically is like a, a funnel going in and out of it. Wait, so you believe in the hollow earth theory? Not, I believe the earth is not fully hollow, but it has hollow points. And it's always shifting, moving around. And that's why we, ne we can never pinpoint it. It's because we're secretly like that Atlantis and the mole people merfolk people whatever you want to call them is secretly moving around with them i feel like i believe in mole people a little bit more on the aspect of futurama where they showed that city that yeah. sunk underground and the people just lived the, i mean because i've seen people that have been in caves for months and months and months come out into daylight and be like the sun the sun like because they've just been so closed off i'm like it's hard to think that if anybody tried to live underground for so long that eventually they just wouldn't adapt or evolve to their like surroundings to the point where they would be hurt by sunlight oh yeah well humans have always adapted and always evolved and like a lot of people think all humans you know just came from two thousand years ago i'm like no 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 we could have been around for centuries for like years 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 for millions of years we slowly developed the way we are now it was like i think it was like a two three thousand years ago most people were around six foot height max like and like seven feet max height constantly and now you have people like me who are five foot six short little um short little shits <laughs> i'm, I'm <laughs> sure around. dude dude i'm with you on that one i'm short of shit found a uh, history and the past interesting and what could have been and what can actually be so I like, I like to entertain 
the idea, like, cause I'm a very open-minded person. I think one theory that really changed my mind, my buddy, um, he hosts a podcast called scapegoats pod and, uh, we right. did one on, um, hollow earth theory. It's all about conspiracy theories. And it's fun to kind of hear, um, how people think there's some, I don't believe like the flat earth one is kind of very hard no. for me to fall into, but one that really got my like mind triggered was my buddy, Robert Solomon does one called this uncanny earth. And he talked about how we come from Mars and I'm sitting there like, explain, like, what do you mean we come from Mars? And he thought like the fact of that meteorites hit different planets and then those planets, when they get hit, obviously some particles are going to float off. And he believed that like from the impact of like a a meteor into Mars, that particles could have flown off, hit into our atmosphere a long time ago. And then we just evolved from those particles that created this sustainable life or this organism. I'm like, that could make sense. You know, I like to entertain the ones like when it comes to JFK assassinations. And if we really landed on the moon, honestly, if people want my true thoughts on the moon landing, I don't think we actually did it when we said we did it. I think it was a lot of propaganda Mm. and we kind of showed people, well, I mean, we were in a space race. So I'm like, yeah, what's the easiest way to let Russia know, hey, we hit the moon first, make a fake video or make whatever. And then tell them, oh, we landed on the moon first. and then when we do actually have the resources to go up there, we do it. And we just, we just act like we did it before. That's what I think it was. That, that sounds plausible. I mean, but then again, if there's a whole alien side of it, if they have all these ancient ships from the thirties and twenties and stuff, maybe they got it earlier. They just couldn't prove it earlier. So they had to fake it because they didn't want to show what there is really going on up there. Is nobody talking about the fact that during this COVID situation, the government released that UFOs and unidentified flying objects, all that stuff was real, and nobody yeah. said shit? No one did. Uh, what happened like, to yeah. Area 51, Jeff? We were trying to storm it in September, and it fucking, it's gone. We didn't even, we don't care anymore. What happened? So, the real thing is, Area 51, I think, is fake. Not like the actual place, but I think... The actual site for aliens is somewhere else, more north, like by Wisconsin. And the Air 51 is just a cover-up. And that's actually just a, like a Navy slash airspace kind of thing. I believe they study you, new things. I, I believe in that a lot. I think what's really crazy is like from being on some podcasts where we talk about aliens, UFOs, all these things that pilots, all their first encounters of when they were able to kind of see. And then they bring up things like optical eye illusions, uh, searches like when you're working at such high G forces, your eyes can play tricks on you, making dots or making things that aren't there. I'm like, it sucks because like the way they explain it, I just wish someone would come out and straight up tell you like, Hey, aliens are fucking like the government did like, Hey, aliens are real. Like these are, here's one right here. This is his testicles. And this is what he would use <laughs> if he was going to kill you in a locker. Room. Like he would use, the that's psychic, true. you know, like I wish they would just be more open about their information. But like what gets me is the fact, like it leads into the cult type thing which is the aspect of like a lot of the government conspiracy theories, just people just don't believe in MK ultra and all these other things. I'm like, how can you, how can you not like, you know, the government's doing some shady shit. How could you not believe in MK ultra? It is. And, um, you know, Lincoln park, the original band name was MK ultra. Wow. That really just kind of revolutionized my childhood. And there's a, there's a weird thing going around with Chester Bennington. I know it's a sensitive topic for some people, but he was actually doing a documentary about um, child abuse with, you know, sexual stuff and how him and his, uh, his other people trying to expose it all end up dying somehow. And you know, then you have the whole Wayfair thing. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm-mm. So pretty much Wayfair was selling cabinets and stuff for like $4,000 for a cabinet with certain UPC codes, certain names. And now there's like missing children with that, with those name with their names as uh, UPC codes. I, I started looking into it recently because it's going against like pizza gay and all this weird stuff like Jeffrey Epstein and um, selling children and stuff. And somehow it's all connected with like a total government control system. I wonder how many people have been involved into cults and not yeah. known they were in a cult. 
that's why that's why I'm wondering like how far does it go? How big is it? If it's just certain people, just like uh, Jonestown, all those people believing in you know the perfect utopia, they all died, got killed, suicide, whatever it was. It's crazy how some people get into that cult mindset. That's why Charles Manson, he was my only person who ever affected me negatively. Like ghosts, I laugh at him. Most serial killers, I laugh at him. Charles Manson's the only one who affects me for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because he can get you to do what he wants without him doing anything at all. Yeah, like the manipulation aspect of things. I think it's a lot yeah. different physical torture than it is like with mental torture. Mental yeah. torture is like one, like if you can get people to like, can think like, make them think they're paranoid or make them think they're like schizophrenic or make them think they're suffering from something that they're not suffering from. That's just warfare on a whole different level. Like I, I really I, is. I rather take physical torture rather than being manipulated, m- manipulated mentally. I mean, the whole factor of like, if you make me think I'm like paranoid, next thing you know, you could develop schizophrenia, like all these other types of things like, holy shit. So I've always um, found culture and history fascinating. And I always look at different like uh, countries and religion. Like I'm not like a typical like f- a political person normally, but I believe that there's always a cycle of people trying to control certain things to a certain degree. And most, the best way to control a society is implosion and then control the implosion. That's can't what I have think a... is going on right now, dude. If you really want exactly. to exactly I've talked about this um recent especially recently with the fact of like there it's like the government for I mean, especially like when I first started this podcast, I was talking to a, a rabbi about this, the fact that the government was always scared of two things, the people and religion. Well, we live in a society now where Catholic and Christian aren't really the popular religions anymore. A large percentage of the population, millennials mostly, don't have a religion. So they've been able to tear down churches because religion is not that strong, but the people, when they come together, they become strong. And I think during the whole lockdown and the whole stay inside your home order was a test of their power to see how far they could really push it without you questioning your rights as a human. And then, you know, the sides go back and forth. There's points to prove. I'm just looking at like, The government has done the shadiest shit, and to think that sometime soon there's not going to be an Illuminati again, there's not going to be some secret thing, it's just, it's it's not hard to believe. I've read so much stuff when it comes to MKUltra, like the amount of like uh, some of the experiments they used to do on people, like nobody understands Mm -hmm. the cure to schizophrenia, for instance, is electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Basically, that's shocking your brain. So when those types of schizophrenia triggers come up into your head, it shocks you. So you just don't get that feeling of schizophrenia anymore. You don't get, you don't go crazy. You don't go into the thing. But they used to do stuff where they used to put put a blindfold on people. And I've read a dude's story where he was encountering his experience with it. They put a blindfold on him, put earplugs in his ears, give him a drug that totally made like paralysis of his body threw him in a hole and then covered him in snakes. Just did that as an experiment to test. I'm like, if you look at anything the Nazis did, the whole thing with the Nuremberg trials, the fact of we let granted all these people pardon just for their research information. I'm like, and and then we hire them and then we use them to like launch our missiles or, you know, go to space. Just like every single um, country has done something bad. Japan has even done something bad with his own people. Unit 731, dude. There you go. Yeah. Biomedical Tissue Services of Japan. Do you know what that is? Um, where they literally, uh, it's like melt your skin off or something like that. These, this is a name for, it look, It sounds like a sanitation company. They were literally yeah. people that were getting a black van. They would have five of them drive to different towns and pick up like 50 people. And then they would just, you would never see those people again. Yeah. I remember hearing about that on this one podcast, uh, Time Suck with this guy. And it was really fascinating. I'm like, really? And then I started looking kind of into it. I'm like, huh, what do you know? So I didn't know exactly what was happening because all this stuff started happening. And I, I, my problem is I see all this stuff happening. I try to go rabbit hole, rabbit hole, but then I end up getting distracted. I'm like a chipmunk. That's like how I was. I ended up diving into one article. You dive into like 50,000. As soon as I typed in MK Ultra, they're talking about sleeper agents and all these other experiments. I'm like, yeah. hang on a second. But I think it's, 
really strange with people because when what scares me about a serial killer is like when you are listening to a serial killer, you're hearing into it, and then next thing you know, you see something like they don't seem like they they have any remorse. That's what gets me, which yeah. is like why there's something mentally wrong there. That's why I say like there should be a death penalty for sure. Like people that are like. I don't know, like, don't feel anything. And they're like, oh, I'm not going to change. Why did you kill them? And I watched a dude get frustrated at that question, like, because I wanted to. And that's what he kept saying. Yeah. I was like, okay, this guy does, this guy can't get help. There's nothing that's going to help him. We're just going to waste our time. So just, you know, death penalty. I know that's a tough decision for a lot of people to hear, but you've come across people where, like, I watched a video of a kid. And he's sitting there, a robber broke into his house. He shot the guy in the knee. The kid was like seven oh, years old. Now yeah. you're, you're hearing that good on the kid. He saved his family. That's what I thought until the kid went deeper into what he was doing. He goes, then I shot every single one of his fingers off and I was hearing him scream in pain. The dad goes, I woke up when I heard him laughing. His son was laughing at the guy that he was shooting. Then he shot the guy's jaw off hold on a second he has covered in blood and the interviewers are like wow that must have been a crazy experience he was like i like the blood i like the blood <laughs> and he just kept saying i like the blood so then they're like oh did they you i heard your school gave you an award it's a photo of the kid wearing his bloody shirt holding an award and I'm oh like, man and i'm like you didn't oh. change your shirt and then his dad was like why would he change his shirt that's his sign of honor i was like oh you guys are like nuts. Well, yeah, I now that's why I think culture is everything because I think as a you know as country and as a, a planet you know humankind is slowly dwindling down in some way. Like we're trying to pinpoint and fix certain things, but I think it's actually making it worse. So um, just like back in the good old days of the fifteen hundreds, not really not good not good days. People would just kill each other randomly for no reason you know gunshots like cowboys you had a problem with someone you shoot them or you fight them now we have like digital assassination of people and we try to ruin their life emotionally and you know make it where they suffer through life we we, we fight on a emotional like depressed depression now instead of a physical and like confronting way it's a, it's a mental thing especially when it comes to social media being able to target somebody through that and cause emotional scars where it causes depression and that slowly eats at you to where people like end up jumping off their roof or shooting themselves in the face or something because of the fact of just yeah. being hurt so bad now this brings back a really good theory do you think so a long time ago i podcasted with my cousin it was like my ninth episode or something and we talked about the little Wi-Fi signal boosters you can put into the like electronic sockets in your house to boost the signal in a certain part of the house. Mm -hmm. Do you think the government could hack that to send like an EMP to be able to shut off your nervous system? Like, cause if your nervous system is electro impulses, next thing you know, they just do a little EMP instead of your phone getting wiped out. It just shuts you down in your own house. Well, that's why a lot of people believe China already has that in a way, especially with 5G. You have your, it's like, um, it's a suicidal um, frequency. So pretty much, like, imagine your phone. Sorry, I don't normally look on it. But if imagine Verizon all of a sudden said, everyone's phone is going to turn off. And if you try to turn on, it's going to explode. They, anyone can have that, te technically, that have that power. They could overheat the battery and then kind of melt through. If you're not paying attention, you know, have it on your chest, battery acid can go through and drip through your like, flesh. I know it's not, it doesn't sound that bad, but. I think they already have that power and that technology, and I think they could use it, and I think they will eventually use EMPs and stuff. We're in a situation in war where foot soldiers will not really matter. The first thing that will happen is EMPs and then nukes, and then whoever, we survive all the fist, and then it'll be like Fallout you know, 76, Fallout 3, 4. That's where I think eventually the world will go if we don't you know, get a hold of things. I look at the fact that we talk about like, um remote assassinations like people being able to crash your tesla like have you ever heard yeah. of those things like some dude's driving in the middle of a tunnel and his tesla just takes a hard left into a wall or you're like wow that ambassador got killed like, it, like yeah. epstein for instance that's a clear mark of some dude that got killed 
Like that's some oh, like, definitely. And everyone's just like that happened. It's like, yeah, what are we going to fucking do about it? Like, what are we going to like start to look at things closely? Like before they would have thought the government would have never done that. I look at well, how long until, you know, I've seen, I've read many articles on somebody's phone exploding when they put it up to their head on the aspect mm -hmm. of, Oh, the battery got too hot. How long until like somebody like a president is holding a phone up to their face and some dude just sends a code to his phone and the thing explodes? Well, they also have people with like, you can copy people's voices and video quality on YouTube now. So imagine just someone somehow getting a hold of like Iran or and like Trump's voice calling them and threatening them and then threatening to blow them up with a nuke. They don't really know, so they try to launch missiles at us, and then some, or they attack some citizens. Or if we're talking you never about know. Trump, he's probably said it for real. So you never know. That's the thing. I'm not a political person, right or left. I think everyone in government is stupid. I, I agree with you on that ever. one. I I don't think any person should be running the country, and I think. The weird thing is once you appoint somebody into power, they're just going to surround themselves with like-minded individuals. It's the same reason why like we're all – like even as podcasters, we're involved in the same kind of groups that think along the same lines oh, as yeah. us because it gives us all something to talk about. If you're president, are you going to put a bunch of people in office with you that just don't agree with you and say no to everything you're trying to pass? Fuck no. You're going to put a bunch of people in there that are like, I want to pass a law where everyone has to have mac and cheese for dinner every single night. A bunch of people are like, well, Ooh. I love mac and cheese. Like, that's the whole thing. It's like, well, you got to have somebody in there that doesn't. You know, you got to have that yeah. second opinion in there. Um, I think when it comes to the weight of the world, man, technology is consuming us pretty quickly. And I'm above, I'm at the line where it's like, I like having a new phone, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want my house to be controlled. I don't want to get a gene chip. I feel like with now we're becoming a cashless society in a way. I'm like, oh, it's yeah. going to evolve into tracking, tracking, tracking. And I'm not a fan of that because like, I mean, I get constant, like I've literally been talking to you for a half hour and I had two phone calls come and they say potential spam. Where the fuck is yeah. that coming from? And why is it targeting me? So that's coming from most people say India, but there is President Obama before uh, he passed a bill trying to prevent it and try to prosecute people from actually doing that. But when it ever Trump took over, I think that never continued through or it just got worse. But I don't know for sure. That's why I'm not left, right? I, I just see that more people are getting desperate and more willing they're going to try to target people like us. I'm not saying Americans are stupid, but I think we have become lazier comfortable, and comfortable. Yes, comfortable. Especially like our phones, like especially with me growing up, my uncle said, you have the technology in your hand to look up Shakespeare, every single world war, all the wars, everything, all the greatest generals. You can look it up in your hand right now. What are you, what, what are you doing with it? Porn. My, or MySpace or I'm whatever it was. Oh, fucking, we tossed out MySpace. <laughs> all right. Or, you know, Facebook and now TikTok, which is owned by a couple companies. I called it from the beginning. And the reason why I never made a TikTok was I said that it was a, it was a terrible and it was a corrupt thing. I said, that's where mental health is. That's the part. If you look on there, I can watch multiple videos of people that have just lost their shit. And I mean, now it's coming out. India had banned TikTok because China yep. can actually get your information and control you through TikTok. Now the mm -hmm. United States, and, some states are now talking about banning TikTok. I'm like, I fucking yeah. called it. And I'm also calling it here where I've called it on other podcasts. And if you heard me and don't believe me, you're, you're in doubt. Mr. Rogers, serial killer. I bet you $20 he's got something closeted. I think so too. And just like people think Bob Ross could have been a killer. I don't personally think so. But there was that conspiracy theory where he was a killer hiding his bodies in the paintings. I saw that as like a meme. I thought it was so funny, but stupid. I don't think he is. I think he's too nice. But that, that's that like would be the interesting, one with right? Like us, with the Wizard of Oz, where they said there was a body hanging in the beginning. And then if you watch the actual old school tape, you're like, holy shit, there really is. And it's like, but yeah. what else could that be? I'm like, dude, that would be a good thing to talk about is how many people died on the set of a movie and they just totally ignored it and didn't even mention it. Or just how many people have died from in movies and how the director just pretty much covered them over 
just like um, how Bruce Lee, you know, he died from, you know, suicide from shooting himself, right? Or no, someone shot him. Yeah, someone shot. Well, I think it was that or his son. Somebody put a bullet in a um, oh, it was yeah, it might in have a fake son. gun and it's shot. from the crow. Well, if you ever heard Joey Diaz talk about Bruce Lee about the court case with his wife and the reason why his wife or his sister or whatever didn't actually go into the thing was because they believe he was killed by the triads because they said that he died yeah. from like um a heart Mom's attack or, or or something. And then next thing you know, like the night before he got or he was found dead, he was dating or no, he went over to some girl's house whose boyfriend was the one of the members of the triads. And then, yeah. then like it, in the thing, it was a, supposed to be like cardiac arrest or something. But then if you look at the actual body, the dude looked like he got the shit beat out of him. Like he had a black eye. He had a bunch of stuff like somebody beat him to death. And then and the doctor. Yeah, though the doctor that did the autopsy ended up dying six months later in a car accident. So it's like, hang on a second. When are we going to start looking at this as some mafia-run shit? And I think that's how most of the country is right now, or how the last few, um, I'm going to get probably, hopefully don't get deplatformed for this, last few presidents have been, like, they have been run by, like, a mobster kind of style. Yeah, with politicians, for sure. I believe that um, a lot of them are just, like, like for Trump, for instance, I feel mm-hmm. like he's in office and everyone's like, oh, he's controlling everything. No, I feel like he's just like he's a he's a puppet on a string right now, to be honest with you. I definitely think yeah. there's something crazy bigger. Um, JFK hinted at it a long time ago. I think that there's always been this shadow society, but now it's just become so everywhere. I, yeah, well, I believe it's so obvious now. And I feel like now it's just going to get super strong to where we're going to be pointing at everything like, like the Freemasons. I never trust anybody that's in the Freemasons or anything. I'm just like, that probably was something back in the day where it was really, really kind of culty. And they still do cult stuff things when it comes mm-hmm. to their like, you know, their whatever their things they do on the weekends and their rituals or whatever. But I'm like, as people, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to get into groups. We're supposed to do these things. We're supposed to create a community. That's how we've always been. But yeah, how far until that community becomes more of like, like you know, like a corrupt government? It exactly like um, it, it's like people believe in tribalism. Like everyone just gets a group, and whoever's leader of the pack of the the chieftain is going to rule everything. And I wonder who's the leader of you know Freemasons. Man, see, or is a mutual thing. Like, if you look at history, I look at like George Washington. Yeah, he was a big Freemason guy. He was obvious about it. So was Benjamin Franklin. But like, we look at all these spots where like these leaders, and like, if I had to ask, like, what personality trait would you give George Washington? If you got, if you just by looking at pictures of him, what would you say he was? I look at him. I'm like, he has a huge ego i feel like he wants to be the limelight he's like a trump character you know he's not really about a lot of his good deeds it's more about people thinking he's good i actually don't think he was that egotistical i actually think he was okay i think he was more like a jfk because he he only ran like what was it two times potentially i think only two times and he said he didn't want to run anymore after that because that's not what was supposed to be his role as as you know president which you know like fdr a lot of, he ran like four times three or four times and then they made it where you can only run twice after him ah uh, see because i was talking to a historian and he was talking about um john it was either john adams or john hancock didn't like george washington because of his ego mm, uh i think it was john adams so i look at that and i'm like he was a guy that never wanted to be president. He was a guy that never wanted the limelight. And I feel like anybody that would be a good spot to be in the limelight is never going to be in it because the fact is they don't want to be in it because they have shit that they know is going to get uncovered about them. And I'm like, yeah. And I, so what, what the, if you're, if you're a hundred percent better of a candidate to be in office, but you're afraid some dude's going to find out that you like to be tied up and gagged or whatever, what the yeah. fuck? Like, what? What's gonna happen? Like, I wish people would just be admit to their shit. Like, if I was a better, gonna be a better president, and someone was like, "Uh, yeah, but don't you like to do this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I do. I fucking love to do that." And you know what? I'm still yeah. gonna run this country, right? And I, I think the same thing. I think the last few presidents have been more of the you know po- political politician kind of figure. Like, mm-hmm. 
they kind of set themselves up. That's why I think everything's so corrupt. Everyone just sets them up on their high horse. And that we need someone like, a lot of people don't like it, but Elon Musk or someone like that. He's uh, doing that's too kind much of more shit, down man. to earth. I, I feel know he like is, but... that's why he's creating so much. I'm like, if he took a step back from just doing so much and just decided to run, but then it turns into like the movie where like, uh, what are they watering the crops with Gatorade and Terry? Idiocracy. Yeah. You can't like, you, you can't, you can't. Cause the next thing you know, we start, we, what happened was there was a turning point in our country. I think when we started, instead of appointing people that were fit to do the job, we started appointing celebrities and then people that we just wanted to be popular. Like, let's get the rock as president. Yeah. You know, don't do Arnold that. Schwarzenegger. The governor. Arnold. The Arnold. governor. I'm the governor of California. Yeah. Oh, Good God. down. I always think of the Simpsons movie. You got me bringing me back to the Simpsons. Yeah. I was like, I love the Simpsons. Read, not to read. <laughs> just like the Simpsons. They have a lot of, you know, things that they show in their episodes that, come true supposedly i don't know if you heard all the theories yeah, behind them the trump thing was pretty pretty good i dude i'm telling you man i don't know it's really really strange to see how the world works and i think it's even more boggles my mind is the fact that people are just resistant to this idea that like there's something like this going on and i'm like it's not a conspiracy theory a lot of the stuff is more on the lines of the fact that People are the strangest, most spontaneous things I have ever seen in my entire life. Like the yeah. fact is we just live in this mindset of being on the constant routine over and over and over again. But then we have these capabilities to be these extraordinary crazed out individuals, which is why I understand serial killers a little bit. Like the fact of how did a person get to that point? What, how did their mind think? What was their thing that involved them into this type of stuff? I feel like cults are more popular than, you know, like I look back at a lot of, you ever seen the nightmare on Elm street? Yes. Okay. I so love you, know, them. The, you know, when the kids discover that they're in like, Oh, he actually did do those things to us. And we didn't just lie and he got killed. I look back at my own life, like at any point could have that happened to me. If there's something that I have repressed where like one day I'm going to wake up and be like, holy shit, wait a minute. I was in a cult. Well, yeah, that's why a lot of people think like with religion or just uh, po political parties and stuff, or just the way you work, the way you hang out with people, like technically I could be considered part of a cult because I'm part of the serial killer, you know, morbid scene. So I get, you know, I, I like the dark sense of humanity and I try to find good, the good in it. That sounds weird. Like I, like you said, serial killers, I find them fascinating. Why would they do that? And like nowadays, nowadays serial killers are mass shooters and stuff. Yeah. But then you look at like why that kid got there and then you realize like all the in things that influenced him into doing that. And a lot of it is gets what played on media. I feel like that's just a good, that's a weird thing because media doesn't highlight the names of serial killers or terrorists because they don't believe any of them should have gotten any attention. They'll like, if it's a shooter, they'll talk about the shooter, but they never really highlight a person's name. Like I think a long time ago, it was like at a park or something. Some dude started firing an AR-15 and people yeah. thought it was fireworks until they started realizing it was bullets. It was like the first mass shooting before the guy that broke into the Batman movie or whatever and shot up the theater. But I mean, if we look at that and look how media plays it in a way where it's like, how many people out here in this world want to be famous? How many people want to be remembered right. for something? And that's why people are so desperate to be like on Snapchat, TikTok. And like they notice the easiest way to get, I think, is actually the news media actually covers it to a certain degree that they shouldn't. I think they, you know, they don't say the name, but they might you want to go look them up and find out what they're like. Well, you, they talk I about it so much. I know it's to warn people, but it's like, you understand somebody that's like, well, I guess I'm never going to be famous by being popular in a good way. Yeah. I could just do this horrible crime and be remembered forever. Exactly. Just like, um, like the kids in Colorado. This like it's crazy. What do you but, mean kids in Colorado? Um, there's what yeah, happened? Did something happen story. in Colorado? No, it's just there is a lot of you know that shooter that shot like you said, the Batman? Yeah. There is some things where supposedly 
he could have had a, a partner. It was a weird, crazy conspiracy theory. I'm like, why would someone do that to innocent people when he had such a good upbringing and stuff? He must have had some sort of person telling him. Also, there's a lot of like mental health issues too. For instance, um, we actually, when I was, um, this was perfect timing for me. I went to Hawaii when I was like in, I think, 11th grade. Yeah. And um, there's a kid in my class. I won't say his name just because it's not yeah. really right to do so. But he threatened to shoot up the school because a bunch of kids were making fun of him. He said, I'm going to come in here with a gun and shoot you. I went on vacation, so I had no idea any of this happened. So by the time I get back, it's like, the I guess, the last day. So everyone was afraid. I mean, I was gone for like two weeks. So everyone yeah. was afraid to go to school for like almost a month because of this kid. So I went into school and I was like, why is there five people in our class right now? And the teacher was like, this guy threatened to shoot up a school and everyone's staying home. Like they're, you know, we're not, we're not giving any kids detentions or we're not doing anything. We're not marking them absent. We're just marking them here. It's because people are too afraid. People are calling in mothers, parents, everything. The kid actually wow. got in some serious trouble. And I was just like, wow, I always miss shit when I go on vacation, but it's like, <laughs> At the same time, like, I mean, I was getting bad grades. So trying to come home to my parents and be like, did you know that there's a kid that threatened? And, and they're like, shut up. Like, you're going to school. I'm like, but that, there's a killer. But um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. Like, sometimes people get built up so much to a point where they're breaking. They feel like that's the only option, too. And it's like, yeah, it's hard to understand and, these types of things when it happens. And that's why I try, like, I try looking up every thing from different people just like uh I, was, I saw this one guy talk on about the study about how as a culture we're slowly going downhill and as without you know religion certain figures in our family uh certain moral guidelines we slowly become more dependent on certain things and when we don't get it we get more depressed that's why depression has been actually risen in younger generation people younger than me have it worse than i have it yeah, and, twelve year olds uh, are developing um, depression on the fact that social media is giving them so much of a reach to look up more bad shit. Back in the yeah. day, you were restricted to the TV that had not as many channels as we have today. Shout out to free cable out there, but the yeah. whole, the whole factor is you know having that phone in your pocket, and the next thing you know if you get a chip in the back of your head that gives you the internet at your whatever your you, whatever you want to look back into your skull, you can see porn if you want. But you, you can <laughs> see CNN articles and advertisements of did you see this? Did you see this? Did you see this? I was like, this is what's ruining a lot of kids. A lot of kids are getting upset now. Kid, they don't know why because they're just getting. You can easily handle the problems in your own family. Handling yeah. the problems of the world is a bigger issue especially when it's and, on your device and in your face 24 seven. And like, I grew up in the weird generation. Like I was called a boomer once in a store by this young kid. And now it felt so weird. I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a boomer. And, and I'm like, he's like, well, you're talking about um, having call on a, you know, the old fashioned landlines and stuff and, you know, old dial up AOL and stuff. So he called me a boomer. And I was like, that's no, not a boomer, bro. No, no. I had that. I know. I don't know. I'm like, that's not a boomer. So he, I think he was just, you know, just making fun of me because I'm older, but that's I'm like, I was thinking about it. That's how you teach it. values is you get a kid to call on a landline. He has to, it, the parent picks up. No kid will remember what that was like. Holy yeah. crap. It's and, freaking and that's why I think we're the last chance of normalcy in our, <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be the generation gap. And I think we're so awkward for not knowing what to do on either side. And I think that's what's happening is these two complete opposite people are mashing. And we're kind of just like, eh? Do you think so I think that, we need to be more vocal. Do you think that serial killers are going to, or just killers in general are going to be more of a thing with the fact of how social media seems like what is really kind of the main progressor, I would say, is the fact of a disconnect between people. Um, when you disconnect with people, you devalue people, and then a mm -hmm. life doesn't seem as important. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what's happening right now. That's why I think there's less um, serial killers and stuff in action now. The best way to do it is mass murder or mass genocide. That's why I think, like Jonestown, that's what's going to be the next big thing is someone's going to take out like a whole town somehow. Like there's going to be like a big old football game, and that's what's going to happen is someone's going to go after that. Because people are too afraid now of getting caught. There's too much technology to trace them. 
they're too afraid to actually do it themselves. Like have they even trace? They have to do it all at once. That's why I think it's happening. Yeah, and I think it's like it's it was rare. Like you know, for instance, I tossed out that case to Kaylee about in my town the murder that happened. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys studied on that one at all. We did. It was crazy, right? It was. Did you, are you guys going to do an episode on it? We already did. You already we did? Adding, I got to yeah. check it out. Holy crap. I didn't know you guys posted it already. And then she was telling me about it. She was like, it was crazy. I was like, yeah, but like, for instance, just recently this summer, we had a, I mean, we've had cases like a couple of years ago, for instance, where a dude got stabbed 62 times. And I mean, to sit yeah. there and stab somebody 62 fucking times. That's Back ridiculous. in the day, we had a, that one case I told Kaylee about. That was like when I was like five or six, and that was wor- that was news for our town. That was heard about for oh, yeah. years. Now we get like a couple deaths every year. Nobody gives a shit. It's just becoming more common now. I'm like, we're definitely being desensitized. I wonder if there's a way to fix this, or is there just going to be, you know, you can kill somebody and it's not going to be that bad? Like, what, what's what's the answer to that? So I think we actually need a, a restructure of the justice system in general. And then um, somehow find out a new way to, not religion, but a, a understanding of certain under, like guidelines. You know, you, don't, you may not believe in the Ten Commandments or whatever, but like, you know, thou shalt not kill. I think that's um, a good law for anything. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think like we should read. That needs to be preached a little bit more, the value of a human life. And like, I hear so many people that get like out of jail or something for killing somebody and they talk about like, you got to respect and like, you know, you got to find something. I'm like, well, why do you always have to find religion to get that aspect? Why don't you just know that you shouldn't do this? I mean, we all get those thoughts. Like I told Kaylee, like, you know, uh, what happens if I hit this person with my car? But at the same time, it's like, no, you don't actually do it because you know, that's wrong. But like, yeah, a lot of that's going by the wayside where people don't even understand that's wrong anymore. They're just trying to fit in. Yeah, I think that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to get that notoriety. They're, they're trying to get more famous. They want that positivity. They want their name on a that billboard acceptance. somewhere or on, a, on that little piece of article on CNN or Fox or whatever it is. They want their name on that little thing. They want that 30 seconds of fame. And then they eventually get merged somehow their family can get it. They, they want to be remembered, I think. I think there's so many young kids nowadays who don't understand that you have to do certain things in order to get famous. I think or, a lot of it also is too, like if you look at a gang killing, mm-hmm. ju- a justified crime, for instance. I feel like a lot of people get manipulated, for instance, and get it twisted around in their head that what they did was justified. Now, there is a thing as a killing, and there is a thing as a justified kill. A justified yes. kill, in my opinion, is there was a father, for instance, that had his daughter or his son had gotten uh, molested by a coach at a college or something. Something like that. And um, the, the kid was going to, the guy was going to get off. And they were walking him through an airport. And this dad just walked in, bright daylight in front of everybody, pulled out a gun and shot the guy right in the head. Cops threw him to the ground and picked him up and pulled him away. But they whispered something into his ear. And I'm like, they probably whispered good job. Yeah, Only on the aspect of like, if you put yourself in that father's scenario and that ki- your kid just got like severely scarred for the rest of their life and was basically hurt. And I mean, probably beyond years and years and years of therapy. Then a dude who did that to your kid is about to get off free. You're telling me you're not going to lose your shit. Yeah, I I totally agree. I think um, just like the death penalty, I don't think the government should be in charge of it, but I think it should be a local government, not not the federal government, but the local government should always have a death penalty or for a certain degree. Just like all these pedophiles and stuff. I think they need to get way more, hard sentences or depending on what happens i think they should just boom that's my opinion and i think murderers they should be tried by their peers and hung by their peers not by the federal government i agree with you i think on the aspect of i think that when it comes to all these people that get like for murder or like multiple charges and pedophile all these things they need to go through some serious therapy for a while and if it's obviously seen by like multiple different doctors that this person can't be helped there's no way like there's just like it's like a shark there's just nothing behind the eyes then you just got to be like yeah 
let's just end, let's just take this guy out. I mean, if you could do that to a politician or you could do that to some political figure, do what, I mean, it, the, would the world be a better place? I, I, t- I've talked to people that have taken salvia trips. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know what salvia is, but it's a yeah. insane it's ass drug. Hell of a drug. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, that has always changed people's perspective. And like DMT, for instance, gives you more of a value of what a human life is. So I'm mm-hmm. like, maybe giving them that. And then if they can't find themselves in that, in that kind of thing, and it's time just zone. Like, yeah. It's Mindset, like, yeah. If, if they just can't change who they are, like, I mean, I think we all know like a Ted Bundy or something. Someone's like, damn, that oh, person's yeah. just evil. Then it's like, that's when it's justified. Yeah. Like if it's an accidental homicide or something, like like you're driving drunk and you kill someone, I think there's a certain degree of what like you should get some of a trial and you like you said try salvia or something and see if you can get restructured or whatever to help you get better. But most of these people like Ted Bundy, all these people I study with Kaylee, they have a system, a, which a judge ruined twenty years, go to jail, they get out in six months. And they've murdered like 20 people. It's like, that's where I think most of our problems is happening is in the justice system. We're getting rid of, uh, we're trying to put away all these people on um, mushrooms, uh, salvia and stuff. I think we should be looking more at those options. Uh, marijuana, we send people mar- for marijuana for like 10 to 20 years. I personally don't use it. I don't think we, you should use it, but it could be a good option for people. But I don't I mean, think anyone we just throw them I, in incarceration and let them yeah. sit there and think even what that more do? about what what they're going to do when they get out because they just want to yeah. go right back to it. It's like you're supposed to yeah. sit there with your thoughts. I'm like, that's the problem is that there is no thoughts or the thoughts are so evil that it's just corrupting them even more. They're so desperate to do something that they do something bad. And so you discipline them for being bad they, and you label them bad and then they try to get a job doing something good and they can't. So they rely on their old habit. It's like a re- never ending cycle. I think we should be more, more understanding of cycles and give people more chances. And if they break it, punish them hard. That's my thing. And if you look at every serial killer, I think the one good thing about it is the fact that those people don't ever want to start a group or a cult. A serial killer, a guy that wants to kill multiple 30, 40, 50 people, wants to be alone wants to yeah. do this on their own. They want to be the, 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 the mastermind. They don't want to have an apprentice. They don't want to have anything like that. And I'm like, that's the one good thing. Cause you imagine if someone like Charles or uh, Charles Manson or a freaking Ted Bundy decided just to start up a giant ass cult of all the people that know all of his tricks and do the same thing, we would be screwed. Well, that's what's happening right now. I think. What do you mean? Like with Charles Manson, race wars, uh, killing each other over stupid stuff, certain people. That's why you think the government was giving him drugs to test things. That was an interesting conspiracy theory I heard of. And I'm like, what if that was just a, you know, a sample? What's going on now, I think, is the aspect of now this is a way to divide our attention. Exactly. It's Abraham Lincoln's quote. United we stand divided we fall and yeah, we're a house pretty, that, we're yeah we're pretty fucking divided right now yeah and i think that's what most of the media and all these people they try to divide us on purpose i think that there's a political thing on top you know that sex ring pedophiles jeffrey epstein and all those guys with the wayfair and stuff i think they're trying to push all this pressure off of that and put it on this basic stuff it's not basic but they try to make things worse than they are and they cause things to be worse they make hatred towards you know police officers towards the black community they want us to fight against each other and i think that's what they're doing an example of those people are like the ones you get in video games that have the cheat codes these people have just developed cheat codes in their everyday life where it's like i don't have to pay taxes i don't have to do this because i'm so much higher up and the reason why i got this is i have pathways i have little glitches and cheats i can do into the real world such as like oh you want to get me for this well i got you for this okay now i'm good and i can do what i want and they set up this lifestyle where they're getting away with things they shouldn't be getting away with they really shouldn't like I, this like i was talking about earlier if you smoke a little bit of weed you go to jail for 20 years but there's literally people who have a sex island and they don't get in trouble but then he somehow suicides himself with the cameras off 
with the two guards, whatever. Dude, I it's gotta just, watch that Epstein documentary again, man. So I don't try to watch too much stuff on certain things, especially with Netflix, because Netflix is owned by you know corporations. I think it's a corporation and political ownership. So they, I, I watched some of it. I noticed they were painting everything on the right side and certain people. Like they, they had Donald Trump in like five or six different pictures, but they didn't have uh, Bill Clinton in any yet, really. So I was like, huh, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a, I take everything back and I look at it, try to look at the full picture. I think Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, all of them, they're all part of this group together. And I think that's why he's running to either expose it all and expose himself or to cover it up. But yeah, I, I think you should watch it, but keep an open mind. Tell me I what wish you think. someone would just tell me the fucking truth on shit. Why would they tell you the truth? Why, that's why, a good question. Why, why, would I, why would telling me the truth or telling just regular people the truth – what I mean, I guess if they told everybody, but why can't she just tell like a selectional few? Like if I send a really like good email, like could you just send me the files? Like I just want people <laughs> to be like, okay, well, all right, so we're actually not in control of our own lives. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know. That's all. Thank I you. I, I'm just going back to my normal, you know, typical job, which I don't really matter anyway. But <laughs> I'm just yeah, gonna. I, cry in this corner and realize that oh there is a shadow society i think it's it is there and i think it's it is controlling us and i think people are seeing it because i noticed a lot of people i talk to that are the conspiracy theorists so either i join them or they're kind of becoming true and i was like oh my gosh i'm one of those guys now i am a boomer how long are they going to be labeled as conspiracy theorists or just people that have actually figured it out? Cause sometimes like I'm looking into a conspiracy theory and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on a second. This is actually like, this is fucking true. Like it's like the I've, aliens, right? I, I've read a lot about MK ultra and stuff and uh, mm -hmm. everyone labels that as conspiracy theorists, but I'm like, no, there's fucking proof. Like it's, you can literally look it up. It was like, like they released videos of UFO aliens and no one cares. That's just, the thing. I think they, I just want to know if Bigfoot and I just want to know if the Loch Ness no. Monster is real. Awesome. Loch Ness Monster real, Bigfoot no. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, Nessie is real, Bigfoot's not. Don't you don't do that to me. Don't do that to oh, me. Oh, no, no, no. I'll no. talk to you about real. one thing that could change your mind. The fact is that the, the, whatever the characteristics of Bigfoot, the whole what he looks like, what everything like that, same thing, Tibetan Mountains, the Yeti. The exact same yep. characteristics of the same. Do I think it's one creature? No, I think it's a race of these gor gorilla yeah. things. But there's no way before cell phones that these two places that are on separate sides of the country could communicate the exact same looking thing. Yeah, and that's why they actually think they found a, a subculture in the bottom of South America too, where towards the tip, for the very tippy tip, they, they think they found some like huts down there. But, um, who knows? Maybe they lived in Antarctica when everything was like kind of connected with Pangea and the big old continent. Maybe Man. when they split off, that's where they were. That's why maybe they are the most people. Man, I like this. This is a good idea. Yeah. I like the Loch Ness. I studied that one too. Do I think it? Do I think it exists? I think at one point it did. I don't know if it does mm -hmm. anymore. I feel like it definitely is probably gone, and I feel like the town definitely capitalizes on this. Is where the Loch Ness monster is. I'm All like, the Scottish. Yeah, I'm like that's. I feel like at one point it was something, but yeah. at this point it's probably gone. But I wish that we would spend more focus into this rather than doing focus into like, oh, let's worry about this or let's worry about that i'm like can we just figure out if there's like a thunderbird or if there's any other of these dinosaur things still alive like somebody yeah. said meg's still alive the meg megalodons what happens if they're yeah. not extinct i'm like fuck did you see that movie if that's yeah. real i don't want to be alive i'm sorry well, that's nuts they found the giant you know octopus octopuses the Wait. The giant squid. squid thank you giant squids they found the giant squids so i don't see why not i think you know you've seen the um, ice age movies with the whole underworld yeah dinosaur thing that's what i actually think the world is like so like journey to the center of the earth yeah that could make sense if that's real though i don't want and anything our, that's yeah. in the middle of the earth coming out and killing me who knows or like how you have a friend who thought mars was like 
where we originally came from. Maybe that's. I really just it. wish I could ask somebody all these questions. Like if me there, too. If if there is like an all mystical being out there decides to show itself one day and be like, yeah, you know that movie John Carter? That is a thing. It's like <laughs> what? what? It's like I have so many questions. First. Why do Pringles make the can so I can't fit my hand inside of it? And second, wh- why, wh- why do kids go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? It's like, you can ask me any fucking question you want, and you're going to ask me these two questions. So I'm like, it's like a genie. I get three wishes, right? No, you get one question. What do you want to ask me? All right. Um, Kim Kardashian. Is her ass real or not? You know yeah. the answer. Like, oh. <laughs> Yes, I don't have any good questions right now. Sorry. Well, hey, look, Jeff, I appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast, brother man. No problem, dude. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Please plug so, your Instagram, plug the podcast, plug everything. So I really don't know all that stuff. Kaylee is the one that does that. I United just know, States of horror. horror. Yeah. So go on. I I use Facebook. So find us on Facebook. All of our stuff is on there. Uh, Kaylee has all the Instagram info. We have TikTok, so just go on Facebook and find us there. Thank you. I'll make sure to link everything in the description. And thank you so much thank for you. listening to this episode out of the Blank Podcast. And stay tuned for our next episode.